What do you do when you feel like you have tried everything, but you're still failing to save at the rate that you would like to? Budgeting is boring as hell. Coupons are a pain in the ass. What do you do? You get creative, my friends. And in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about six lesser known techniques that you can try to improve your savings. Some of these are a little bit off the wall and some of them are common but often overlooked. So let's jump in. So the first half of this list is based on brain hacks from behavior science. And the first example example I have of this is making saving more fun by using gamification. This is what all the cool kids in the tech industry are doing with their apps. And what I mean here is introducing elements from a game like scoring, competing with other people, and of course, uh, the ability to win. In a 2022 paper by Bassanelli et al, him and his psychology mates wrote that gamification is a useful tool for keeping users motivated, engaged, and active. Because if you make an activity more fun, you you're more likely to stick to it. And that's what you need when you're saving for the long term. So how do you apply this to your savings? You get other people involved. Compete with your partner or a friend to see who can hit the savings goal soonest. In the past, if you found that your savings goals are a bit lofty and intimidating, you can also break your savings goal down into smaller pieces and bring in a reward element. Maybe your first $200, you're gonna treat yourself to a takeaway coffee during the week in addition to the weekend. For your first $300, you're gonna treat yourself to an hours guilt-free trash TV. Endless ideas. Another idea is to lean into accountability but with a little twist, i.e. you are going to be accountable to yourself by using reminders. Research from the UK's Financial Conduct Authority found that a lot of people are really bad at saving, not because they're inherently bad but because the financial advice about saving six months of your salary is quite intimidating and people therefore freak out about it and don't start or they quit before they manage to build any momentum. So the first thing to do here is to make sure that your goal is realistic and I have a whole video about setting effective financial goals. And once you're sure that your goal is realistic, all you need is a method to help you stay on track. And this accountability method works pretty well. It's all about setting reminders for yourself and we're going quirky here because the FCA advice, that's the Financial Conduct Authority, also gave some interesting tips for how the, you can make these reminders to yourself extra effective. The first one was to make sure that they're emotional. So if you're saving for your kid's future, you could write in your little note to yourself, have you saved any money for little Bobby's university fund yet? And if you're struggling to get your head around your retirement savings, this one's amazing. Get a digitally enhanced photograph of yourself looking older so that there's that connection between the current you and future you. So in your reminder to yourself, you include a photograph of 90 year old you and say, have you started saving for this person's future? The other thing that's important, which you may have already noticed, is that these have to be relevant reminders. If you don't have a child, there's no point in reminding yourself to save for your kid's future. That's not going to work. About the logistics of these reminders, really simple. You can set a reminder on your phone. That's what I do. Or you can schedule set times to email yourself. And the idea is that you see the email, you get reminded, then and there you want to check on your savings first of all and ideally top it up. By the way, if you're finding these tips helpful, it would be awesome if you would like this video. And now we want to move on to reducing friction, which is all about automating everything that you possibly can. Because moving cash into a savings account not only does not have to be a manual process, it should not be a manual process. Because analysis paralysis is a very real phenomenon that psychologists have studied, with every decision you make, your ability to make good choices diminish. And if you're in a position where every single month you need to reassess how much money to spend, how much money to save, that's going to get exhausting. You're not going to want to do it. And in most situations, you will end up resorting to your default. And for many adults, the default is to just leave that money, which means that you spend it on random stuff instead of consciously saving it. And that makes sense because at the end of a long day at work, your bandwidth for making financial decisions is very fine. People are tired. The good news here is that it's very easy to reduce this cognitive load by applying the pay yourself principle and then automating everything. So when your paycheck comes in, before you have a chance to accidentally spend it or send it to the wrong place, you automate a set amount going straight out of your current account into your savings pot. This happens as a direct debit. You don't need to think about it 
at all. Okay, so now the other things on this list are going a little bit more mainstream, but these are the ones that people often overlook, including myself, but I've had a win recently, so I'm excited to talk about them. The first one, plan ahead. There are certain expenses that you know are coming up. They come up every year, for example, car insurance. Don't wait until the day before your car insurance runs out when you are forced to accept the upgrade offer, which is inevitably more expensive than what you're currently paying. Give yourself some time to shop around and find a good deal. Birthdays is another classic example. You know that they're coming around all year, so instead of blasting through your budget in birthday month, you can plan ahead and spread your costs. Not only are you gonna increase the likelihood of being able to buy certain things on a discount, you are also gonna make sure that throughout the year, there is enough money for you to save. Switching bank accounts. I've done really well out of this one. It sounds boring as hell, but I'm gonna bust some myths here. Firstly, your bank will not tell you if they have created other products that have a better savings rate than your existing account. It's on you to go and find the accounts that have a higher interest rate on your savings. Secondly, people think banking, uh, boring, it's gonna take forever. Switching bank accounts, at least in the UK, is really, really easy. Oftentimes, you just need a few taps on your smartphone and your banking is done. In fact, a lot of times your new bank will even let your old bank know that, that they can close that old account because your money is in their bank now. One other thing that unfortunately is UK specific, I think, but a lot of the banks will also offer incentives. So if you switch to a new account, a new savings account, they will often give you cash back for that move as a thank you. So once you found a new account, you've moved your money into it in just a few taps, you can revert to the reminder nudges that I mentioned earlier. Set yourself a reminder to double check the rates and better accounts the same time next year. That way you are always on top and always saving the maximum possible. Okay, we're in the final leg of this video and the last thing I wanted to talk about, taxes. Make sure that you're paying the correct amount of tax because sometimes the tax authorities get this stuff wrong. This one sounds super dry, but I'm talking about it because not not once but twice I have gotten money back from the UK tax man or woman because of their errors. Okay so how do you actually do this? The first thing is to check your tax code. In the UK you can see that on your tax slip and you want to make sure that your tax code matches your salary and you do that with Google. So the potential benefits of doing this are one that you're paying too much tax and the government gives you money back. The other side is that you're not paying enough tax and that sounds like a bad thing but actually you'd rather know about it sooner rather than later so that you can plan to pay it back rather than getting a big bill in a year's time unexpectedly because somehow they always find out and that's a wrap thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you found these tips really helpful and i am very keen to know if you have your own off the wall or often forgotten about ideas for saving see you in the next video i hope